It's the photographer that makes me fly. I only fly with the camera. I'm, uh, I'm a flying photographer, not a pilot who takes pictures. Probably something else. I, um, what I try and do with my pictures is, is, is I try to show people things that they haven't seen before. Either things that, I mean, I fly in, with my aircraft, I fly in very remote areas, and so I can show people things really never been photographed before, or, uh, or at the very least, show them things that, in a way they haven't seen before. So, um, well, when I was a, a young man, I, um, I hitchhiked across the Sahara. I, I dropped out of college uh, for a year, and I got the idea to, to, to fly over desert at that time. Um, it just, I had a degree in, in geology at the university, and I just knew inherently that to, to fly over these landscapes, I could see them in a, in a unique way. And then when I took up this uh, kind of flying that I do now with the motorized paraglider, I realized that it gave me a way to, to visualize these landscapes in a way that had really never been done before. And so I wanted to, I thought, well, Jesus has been, you know, Sahara's been amazing. What would it be like uh, in the Gobi or the Atacama? And, um, I started, I got this idea to try and see if those would be interesting. If it was, I would try and photograph all of them. And that's what I just more or less have finished doing. So I've been on all the continents for the purposes too, but this um, desert project has been kind of like looking at deserts as like a, a family that's kind of separated, kind of like, you know, uh, what do you call it, septuplets that were divided at birth. And then you see how they're all different, but, but similar. It's, it's kind of hard to describe. It's one of these things, that it, it's kind of, uh, I think people who have spent time there would kind of understand. Um, but it, it's just something about the place that I find captivating. And I've been, you know, not to every country in the world, but all over the world, and there's no place that I find that, that draws me back like Africa does. And part of it, I think, is it's, um, it has tremendous uh, wide open space. It's not, you know, it's probably the least developed uh, continent in the world, except for Antarctica. Um, but it's also just the, the, the spirit of the people, how they make something with nothing, and uh, the diversity of culture. And, and, I don't know. It was something that drew me to there as a young man, and I just uh, stuck. It's, it's really nice to be able to let people interact with uh, your, your your work in their own in their own way. It's not like a, a magazine, and they can dig deeper. You have you know audio; they can hear your voice. It's more personal, but it, in a, it's not like a, a video where they have to watch it all at a preordained uh, pace. So it, it was fun uh, doing that. Um, it's been since it's been done. It's been a little bit curious seeing how. The, the, the marketing or the, 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 the people's ability to find that is controlled by, by Apple, by some person behind I mean, some person behind the curtain you never get to see. Um, but uh, it's also been really curious to see people give feedback, unlike a, a book. People don't like write in the back of a book and then you get ping, you get the email. But with uh, the iPad, people can comment on it. Actually, they, um, we have people comment on the iPad app and we've changed it. It's going, the third edition is coming out this week. So we really want to respond to that. And you never would go back and redo a book and reissue it because somebody said, well, geez, you know, I wish that, you know, the, the layout was a little bit different or something like that. So it's been interesting.